And we only tackled two last time. And that one is uh, because he loved the Lord. So because uh, Solomon loves the Lord, so God granted him an incredible wisdom because he walked according to the statute of his father David. And God was pleased with uh, Solomon. That's the first one. The second one is because he sowed sacrificial offerings to the Lord. So the second reason why God granted unto Solomon an incredible wisdom is because he sowed sacrificial offerings to the Lord. And Solomon planted a seed of free will offerings. Can you imagine he burned a thousand burnt offerings right, to the Lord? And after planting a seed of sacrificial offerings, God asked him what he would want to receive from him. And that's the second reason why God granted unto Solomon an incredible wisdom. And today we're going to look at the last three reasons of why God granted unto Solomon an incredible wisdom. And number three is because he asked for it. Kasi ang wisdom naman dyan, hindi naman yan babagsak sa araw. Yan ang wisdom mo. Hindi gagawin ng Lord yan, mga kapatid. You need to ask the Lord. And Solomon asked for it. Right? So, I remember this story. Dami sa atin nagtatrabaho sa nursing home o sa retirement house. Right? So, yung mga nandyan ngayon nagtatrabaho sa nursing home, ay kaway-kaway naman kayo dyan. There was a single senior guy who moved into the retirement home or nursing home. So, and soon, uh, nandun na siya sa loob ng nursing home, uh, he met a single old lady also. So, siguro itong senior man na ito ay na-inlove dito sa single woman, single lady. And they spent a lot of time talking together. Hindi ba nakikita nyo dyan sa nursing home? So they spent time together. And finally, one evening, he proposed asking her to marry him. So talagang matinik ang senior na ito. So the next morning, when he woke up, he remembered his proposal. So, when he wake up in the morning, he could not uh, remember <laughs> the woman's answer if it's yes or no. So, what he did is he traced the woman. So, uh, hinanap niya yung uh, liniligawan niya doon sa nursing home. And then, he, fo he found out. All right. And then, uh, he said uh, to the lady, I am really embarrassed. Because I proposed to you last night, <clears throat> but I cannot remember if you said yes or no. So the woman replied, <laughs> you proposed to me last night. Oh, thank goodness. I remembered saying yes. Sabi ng senior citizen, na lalaki tuwang-tuwa naman siya sapagkat uh, hindi niya alam na yes pala. Ang answer ng uh, babaeng ito na kanyang nililigawan. But sabi niya, sabi ng babae, But I couldn't remember who asked for me. I could not remember who is that person who proposed uh, to me. So the third reason why uh, Solomon get wisdom from the Lord is because he asked for it. In 2 Kings, in 1 Kings chapter 3, verse 5 to 9, In Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream at night. And God said, Ask what you wish me to give you. Then Solomon said, You have shown great loving kindness to your servant David, my father, according as he walked before you in truth and righteousness and uprightness of heart toward you. And you have reserved for him this great loving kindness that you have given him a son to sit on his throne as it is this day. Now, O Lord, my God, 
You have made your servant king in place of my father, yet I am but a little child. I do not know how to go out or come in. In verse 10 it says, It was pleasing in the sight of the Lord that Solomon had asked this thing. He said, Give your servant an understanding, heart, of, heart to judge, your people to discern between good and evil, for who is able to judge this great people of yours? So in Second Chronicles chapter 1, verse 10, it says now in other passages that Solomon says, Give me now wisdom and knowledge, O Lord. Or in other words, grant me wisdom and knowledge. So, Solomon personally asked the Lord for wisdom. So God has given us also the free will to choose or to decide or to ask for wisdom. So, hindi naman tayo robot, right? Even in asking wisdom, right? We need to have to ask the Lord. At hindi yan babagsak sa harapan mo. Because we will have the free will, the free choice. And God did not create you to ruin or destroy your life also. In John chapter 10, verse 10, it says, I come so that you might have life and have it more abundantly. So it's our free choice to ask wisdom also to the Lord. And God did not create you to go to hell or to suffer God's wrath. In 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9, it says that the Lord is patiently waiting towards you to ask Him. The Lord is really patient for all of us. He's there and He's waiting for us just to ask Him. And in 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 4, it says, God desires all men to be saved and even our salvation. And don't you know that the wisest decision that we can make in our life is to ask to have that wisdom. God does not control our decision because an evil thing happened to us is a product of our wrong decision or a product of not asking wisdom from the Lord. So if God controls our wisdom and then something wrong happens to us and something bad happens in our life, He is to be blamed for any consequences because God controls our decision. But that's not the case because God gives us a free will to decide, even asking for that wisdom. So in James chapter 1, verse 5, it says, If any one of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault and it will be given to you. If is a first-class condition, assuming the reality of the situation virtually. So, the word if is a condition. So, in James chapter 1, verse 5, the apostle James, well, a building on the Jewish understanding of wisdom, saw it primarily as a gift from God. So wisdom, from the Jewish perspective, is a gift from God and available only to those who ask for it. So the definition of wisdom in uh, James' time is wisdom is a gift of God or it's a gift from God. So if it's a gift, then you need to take it, right? You need to get it and available only to those who ask for it. So here in James, he is described as the giving God. Can you imagine that a loving God will never stop giving, right? In Matthew chapter 7, verse 7, Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and he who seeks finds, 
and to him who knocks it will be opened. Or what man is there among you who, when his son asks for a loaf or a bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, he will not give him a snake, will he? If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father who is in heaven give what is good to those who ask Him? So, in Matthew chapter 7, verse 7, it says, A loving God who is never stopped giving. Our God never stops giving. It showers every day. Blessings and showers every day. But He says we need to ask for it. So keep on asking and you will, you will receive what you asked. That's what the Bible says. And God this time is challenging us to ask God. That's the challenge. And our responsibility is to bring our needs to God. We should not rely on our strength, on our wealth. But we need to bring to God. And that is our part, our responsibility. And His promise is that He will respond. In 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7, He says, Because He cares about you. Cast all your burdens to the Lord. Cast all your cares. Cast all your anxieties to the Lord because He cares about us. God is a God of abundance, right? And we need to ask. And God challenges us to ask and to cast our cares to the Lord. Though I'm weak, Yours every single breath.